What's up guys, I'm Salty Mike, and this is your week in review for July 5th, 2021. 3.14 is going to be very late. Chris and Sandy are alive, and with that, the server meshing saga continues. Let's check it out. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news each week, throw my opinions in there as well. Also, I do live stream uh, every day but Monday and Tuesday for right now at twitch.tv slash salty mic. And if you want to stop by and say hello, that's the best place to do so. All right. Jumping into the video, though, with patch notes updates. We don't have any because 3.14 is still in Evo Cotti and it's going to be late. And... You would think that this is not that big of a deal because the patch doesn't have a lot of stuff in it, but remember this, when something from 3.15 gets pushed out because some downstream team or something like that had work to do in 3.14. Uh, you know, these things do sometimes have knock-on effects even in a staggered development type environment with Star Citizen. Then, moving on to roadmap updates, we had a roadmap roundup this week, and it was a bit of a small one, where they added to the progress tracker the rest stop hangar replacements. This sounds like the changes being made to stations that we heard from Luke Presley that are going to happen at some point, uh, and I think these are planned to be worked on somewhere in the Q3, Q4 period. Atmospheric pressure damage, this was spoken a lot about on SCL recently, uh, which is adding a value to ships and armor and suits that can stand certain amounts of pressure. Makes sense for gas giants and other planets coming in the future, I assume. Spacecaping, using gas cloud tech in Squadron 42. Refinery ships, they talked about the Starfarer being a ship with a refinery, and the one they showed at Citizen Con that we, you know, kind of haven't seen more of yet, that is also a refinery ship. But this is not planned to even be started to be worked on until Q1 2022. So yeah, uh, don't get your hopes up if you want your mining experience to have refining in it outside of the stations. Temporarily removed from the roadmap is Ruin Station and Environmental Gameplay. Ruin Station was the main station in Pyro, and I know Pyro was talked about earlier in its existence as being like kind of mined out and empty, uh, but it seems like that has changed somewhat with a lot of the updates that we have seen on the environmental things coming to Pyro, and if you know, I, I, I don't know, Like I, I would normally have said that this is like a monumental issue, that we don't know where it's going to be, because you would have to tie Ruin Station to Pyro, but now I don't know if that's necessarily the case. And then environmental gameplay, I can't remember what that was, to be honest, I'm sorry guys. So leave a comment below, what was environmental, environmental gameplay and why are we missing it? Because I can't be sad that it's gone. Release view uh, is Crusader, Orison, Clouds, they're all committed for the very late 3.14. Then uh, lastly, there was a renamed task from Ship Interior Exterior Culling is now renamed to Ship Interior Ob Object Container Streaming. And it just has a more accurate description, basically just telling us big ships should have less of an impact in the game when this tech is finished. Moving on to video updates. This is kind of the meat of this week. We had the Sandy and Chris video. Sandy posted a tweet saying, if I get a thousand likes, I'll post this video, which, you know, 2015 called your marketing is a little bit out of date, I guess. It was kind of weird. And the video was very weird as well. All these like weird close-ups on them and stuff like that. But I took out the meat of new stuff that we may not have heard and things that are sort of interesting. So they start out with the elephant in the room. So inquiring minds want to know. We have a few questions. Uh, where's 3.14 at? Okay. Well, it's uh, around the corner, I think, probably middle of uh, July is when it'll probably release where um, in Evercati right now, I think we'll be going to PTU in the near future. Oof, I, I hope this gets out there soon and we can start focusing on the patch that everyone's really looking forward to and that's 3.15. Uh, next, they touch on the state of server meshing. Uh, okay, well, server meshing we're working really hard on. Um, we have put together, a, you know, probably our like, biggest uh, engineering uh, strike team. Um, so we have, a uh, whole bunch of the, uh, you know, engine team that's working on it, as well as the networking team, uh, you know, led by Clive. So on the engineering team, we have Chris Balti leading up server meshing work, and Steve Humphreys is also um, contributing a whole bunch to it. 
uh, and uh, we have a whole back end set up that uh, we're doing all in, uh, here internally, but also um, some of the back end services and connections are all being engineered partly uh, up in Montreal as well with uh, Turbo. And there's about 20 people, sort of mostly engineers working on uh, server meshing. So it's probably our biggest sort of overall technical in initiative. Um, yeah, we've already got the, you know, a lot of the, the core features of server meshing have, because we've been working on for quite a long time. So the, you know, authority transfer, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's already been built. And, you know, we're building out the, the, the back end uh, database, what we call the entity graph that is going to sort of persist and remember the state of every single entity and object in the world. So if you stream out an area, you completely remember the state where everything is, you know, whether you dropped a Coke can in the middle of a forest on a planet. Uh, and that that aspect of it, you know, opens up obviously the, the, the persistence we talked about, which is great, but is also a, a fundamental building block for the server meshing. So we've been really working hard on that. We've, um, you know, we're making really good progress to it. I'm not going to promise any dates because it's it's no the, by far the, the most technically uh, challenging thing. I will say probably by the end of this year, we should hopefully have the proper persistence in there that we talked about the proper global persistence which is this sort of streaming entity graph thing that I've just uh, discussed which is you know the new version of what was being called the iCache before if people are getting confused about that. So this basically sounds like they completed most of the tasks for server meshing. Exciting right? But the entity graph task uh, it seems like the most fundamental and hardest to complete task. So uh, for the third year in a row, by the end of the year, this tech should be complete and that carrot just keeps being held in front of our face. Uh, I'm not holding my breath for this one, but uh, it is exciting to see that Turbulent is more involved with these things because um, for the most part, Turbulent seems to be doing a lot of cool and good work. Uh, so yeah, hopefully whatever they need to do is uh, this entity craft thing so we can get it done nice and quickly. Chris touches on something near and dear to me as well in this next clip. So then we, yeah, more recently we started to play uh, Valheim, uh, you know, at the beginning of this year, uh, which was, you know, really great. And it's, it actually has some uh, fun sort of balance and survival light um, uh, style gameplay, which is, you know, similar to some of the, the longer term survival light stuff and crafting stuff that we would want to do in uh, in Star Citizen and some of the stuff we've talked about actually for years. So for me personally, I've heard them talk about like recipes and things like that, but this is really my first time that I can remember, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments of course, where they said anything about traditional survival slash MMO type crafting coming to Star Citizen and it being a thing. Um, you know, he described it as Valheim type crafting. That is very, uh, I think, clear as to what he means there. I don't think we have to read much into that, and I'm really excited about it. So lastly, uh, yeah, there's some kind of really big news. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? And we have some plans for next year, don't we? Uh, yes. So um, when we uh, get back to the office, uh, which is probably going to be a little later on this year, um, you know, the, I'm, you know, we as a family are going to move over to the UK for uh, some time to uh, be with the squadron team to get it finished. Yes. So. Personally, I have no idea what some time means, but if you're moving your entire family to the UK, uh, it sounds like Squadron 42 still is going to be a while. It's, it's not like it's a six month thing, right? Uh, this is the push to finish it, but we don't really know the timeline of what that means, but in the end, uh, the at the very least as a backer for the game and and squadron 42 and, and star citizen it's sort of a light at the end of the tunnel so it's something to kind of get excited about calling all devs it was the other video that we had this week and after explaining the history of actor status rich tyrer who it kind of heads up that pillar of um yeah like actor status and gameplay sort of things he touches on what we can expect from actor status in 3.15. So basically now what we've taken is we've taken that system and now we're starting to introduce the injuries that will apply to you when you take severe damage in your limbs. So you can have a traumatic head injury, you can have a traumatic body injury, you can have you know leg injuries and arm injuries. And we have three uh, tiers or severities of injury. Uh, 
tier one or severity one is the highest that's the worst then we've got tier two and then tier three so essentially when you get a, a tier three injury it's basically going hey you know now you're going to start suffering consequences of that injury and you can't just get a med pen and go cool i'm just going to use my med pen your med pen will will heal your limb health back up to full health but the injuries on your arm will give you different effects at different statuses. I like this. Uh, it really means you have to bring a lot of different things with you if you wanna make sure that you are prepared for all situations. This brings in the need to have inventories on all of our ships or prioritize the ones that do. This really does add more realistic and kind of a survival element. Um, these are the things that matter to me, I think in the short term for Star Citizen, having, uh, I've sort of been mentioning it a lot lately, maybe like the Daisy Tarkov kind of survival elements where they're not, um, but in Star Citizen, they're not as, you know, prevalent. And I think it's going to be really fun. Next, he touches on how medical gameplay will tie into this. If the, your broken arm, it's like a fracture. Now my little man is showing my arm is, is, is red and I'm like, and it's showing I've got a, a tier three. And it's like, okay, I need to go back to a, a medical facility to remove this injury. There's no way for you to remove the injuries out on the field. So you can then go back to a medical facility and your medical facility, there are different classifications of the medical facilities. We have tier one, two, and three. So a hospital or a physical location is gonna be what are classified as a tier one facility. That's the best facilities you can get. So they will always be able to hear everything out. And you can see where I'm going here. Right. Tier two is the second and third is the worst. Okay, you know, obviously that all makes a ton of sense, but if there's no way to heal these statuses in the field, it seems like it might be too detrimental. So Rich touches on that part next with new healing tools. So this is where we started to introduce the healing and medical gameplay. So what we're doing from the healing medical gameplay is that we have the multi-tool attachment for uh, the multi-tool is the healing attachment, or sorry, the multi-tool healing attachment for the multi-tool. And then we have the dedicated healing gun. So the multi-tool itself um, will be an improved version of, of the, of the MediPen. So the MediPen, essentially, what you'll be able to do with the MediPen is you'll be able to use it to heal up your health. It won't heal injuries. Um, and you'll be able to use it on other people as well. So you'll be able to go and, and, and jab it into other people and help heal up some of their injuries. Um, the multi-tool, the, what the multi-tool does is it allows you to heal up injury, not injuries, it allows you to heal up the health. So you can heal up the limb health and your global health. Um, and it also allows you to scan that person and understand what is wrong with them. And the dedicated healing gun is I can scan them and I'll be able to choose which drugs I can then administer to the person who's injured to get them back on their feet. Now, it doesn't heal their injuries. It just removes the symptoms and it removes the symptoms so that that person can then get back to a location and medical facility. So if you've got a tier three, that would be like maybe the Cutlass Red would be tier three, you know, the 890 Jump. Or the Carrick medical facilities that might be like a tier two facility and then the tier one facilities are like the dedicated hospitals the physical locations so the idea of these tools is to stabilize your injury you know if you're if you're going to use daisy as an example again when you break your leg in daisy you take two sticks and a and a bandage and tie them together and that magically heals your leg that, that makes no sense right so this sounds like it stabilizes you for a time um, maybe sort of like a uh, painkiller in Tarkov and you're, you know, allowing you to get back home and permanently heal that injury. So like he said, there's no way to heal your injury, but that doesn't mean that your play session is over and you have to take a trip back to a hospital or a ship with a decent, um, you know, hospitalization station there. Lastly, they touch on respawning. But now when you die, you won't just respawn in a hab. Uh, you'll respawn in, in a hospital facility. Uh, if you've respawned in that hospital facility, um, you'll be in a medical gown and then you'll be able to access your own inventory. Obviously, if you've died somewhere outside of a landing zone, your gear will be left with your body. If you've died in a landing zone, for whatever reason, um, what we're saying is that the security have come and collected you and they've taken you to hospital and they've revived you. So your gear will be in the room um, so you'll be able to then take it with you. Um, you'll also be able to choose which hospital you want to respawn at. So if you want to go and choose, um, you know, I want to re always respawn at Microtech, you can go and, and choose and say, this is my respawn point where I want to respawn. Tier two and above facilities or ships will only have the ability to respawn. So that means tier three 
medical beds won't allow you to respawn. And tier three medical beds are what's in the cutlass red right now. So that's going to be a loss of functionality, which is what it has currently has. I think the key thing to point out here is you will have to recover what you lost if you want to get it back and you can choose your respawn points. It's not based off of your last landed location. And then he does go into a lot more in the rest of the video, but it's a lot of stuff that we already knew and it's it, it didn't really provide too much uh, drastic information. They touched briefly on inventory, which they touched a lot on previously. Scanning, I think personally, we didn't learn much new from that. And hacking is just a mini game that we all knew was going to exist. So until we see it more in action, I don't necessarily think it's that exciting. The, the Jared thing kind of is interesting though. Jared implied that inventory and healing were definitely going to be in 315, but they're not sure about scanning and hacking and a couple of other things. So um, we got to keep an eye out on the roadmap and see what may fall off because they're sort of preparing us for that already. Uh, other updates, Galactopedia update. Uh, as usual, there's a lot of articles on systems, their planetary bodies and moons. Uh, and then the long form post was on a liqueur that has Banu origins called Tri's Cordial. So if you want to check that out, uh, as always, links are in the description for that stuff. Buyback tokens are available today. Um, if you didn't know what that is, it allows you to buy back a ship that you previously um, returned for store credit, where normally you can only buy that ship back with new funds. Now you can use your store credit for a one-time token. Uh, Pride Month celebration, they ha had a post compiling all of the Pride Month screenshots from June. Link again will be in the description. And lastly, the sneak peek isn't really that much of a sneak uh, to me. It's the screen of the gold standard, uh, re you know, rework of the Retaliator airlock uh, that I feel like we already saw in ISC, but maybe it's more polished. I don't know. And that will do it for this week. I do apologize. Uh, we didn't get out. We can review at any point last week. I had a lot of travel trouble uh, getting back home. It was crazy. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to prepare for getting back to my normal day job and all of that. So we're back. We can review should be coming uh, regularly on Mondays from this point forward, as well as answer the call on Sundays. And uh, whenever 314 does drop, I am, as always, as I've said, every single quarter going to try to get out a third video each week. But it is quite difficult given how much time I have and how much time it takes to put this video together each week. So given that, make sure you leave a like on the video, throw a comment down below on anything we discussed today and share this with anybody who you, th you think is interested in what is going on in Star Citizen each week. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will catch you next week. Bye-bye.